when negotiating a medical malpractice or personal injury lawsuit, is the attorney's fee ever factored into deciding how much money to ask for in your particular case? You want to know the answer? Come join me for a moment as I share with you this terrific information. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. The short answer is no, but the bigger answer is possibly. Now, let me explain what happens. In order to give a demand to the opposing attorney about how much you think your case is worth or how much you want to start the negotiations off with, sometimes some attorneys actually pick a number out of thin air. That's a fact. That's a secret that nobody really shares with you. So don't go around spreading that. Don't tell anybody. That's a fact. There are attorneys who just pick a number out of thin air. They see that there are all these crazy numbers in the newspaper. Somebody's suing for $25 million, someone's suing for $100 million, someone's suing for half a billion dollars. And the defense attorney says, well, how much, uh, how much do you want to settle this case? And the attorney says, oh, I want $50 million. Really? Where did you get that number from? How can you justify that particular number? And the sad fact is most of those numbers, most of those initial settlement demands are meaningless. They come out of thin air. They come out of nowhere. The bottom line is that when an attorney is actually negotiating, he has to understand exactly what the true value is of your particular case. Now, what's the true value? True value analyzes your entire case. Part of evaluating the true value of your injuries looks at liability. Who, if anyone, is actually responsible for causing you harm and injury? Is it the doctor, just one person, where you think he's 100% at fault? Or is that fault to be split among different doctors? And maybe the patient is also partially at fault. Because if you, the patient, are partially at fault, guess what? Whatever you think your true value is, is now going to be reduced by the percentage at which you may be at fault. Then we have to look to make sure that the doctor's wrongdoing or his carelessness was a cause of your particular injury. And we rely on our medical experts to do that. Now comes the issue of damages. What is your case really worth? So let's say that the doctor you believe is 100% at fault and you've got medical experts to testify that this doctor was 100% at fault for causing you harm and injury. Okay, what's the real value of your injuries? Well, now we have to look at many different things, such as your age, whether you are working, do you have lost earnings, what are the damages that you are claiming in this particular case, what type of pain and suffering have you had, what type of suffering can you be expected to have into the future based upon your doctors who treated you, based upon our medical experts. We have to evaluate all of that. Will you need ongoing medical care? Will you need ongoing assistance? What type of treatment will you need to correct all the problems that you have? Will you require additional surgery? Another thing we look at is where is your case taking place? The venue. Is it in the Bronx? Is it in Brooklyn? Is it in Nassau County? Is it in Suffolk County? Is it in Upstate County? Where is your case taking place? And you may not realize it, but the sad fact is that that can affect the value of your particular case. And we oftentimes don't have the ability to pick and choose where your case actually goes forward. So we have to evaluate what similar cases have resolved for, either by settlement or by verdict, in that county. And then we have to look and see whether your case is similar. What's different about your case compared to those other cases? Of those cases that are similar, that occurred in your county, where your case is proceeding, that have gone on to trial and to verdict, what happened in the appeals process? Was the case sent back for a new trial? Did they try it all over again? What was the ultimate outcome? What did they receive? Did they settle the case after verdict? Was that case settled before? And now your attorney has to do a tremendous amount of research to try and understand what other similar cases have been resolved for. Only by doing a full, complete investigation on the true value of your particular case, now your attorney gets a sense and an impression in his mind that says, okay, now I have an idea, a clear idea of what your case really is worth. Now I can go back to the defense attorney and begin negotiating and make a settlement demand. Now, you should know that when you make a settlement demand, what you ask for is never what you're going to get. So, for example, if your attorney thought that your case is worth $5 million, he's never going to approach the defense attorney and say, hey, listen, I need $5 million to settle this case. You want to know why? It's because the defense will never give him what he is asking for, ever. That's not how negotiations work. You walk in, you say, hey, I need $5 million to settle this case. Nobody ever turns around and says, okay, let me get out my checkbook, $5 million paid to the order of this injured patient. No, that's not how it works. That's not how any of it works. So how does it work? 
So now, if your attorney believes that your case really has a value of $5 million, and that's the value that is going to occur if your case goes all the way to trial and it goes up on appeal, and now there's a potential for settling, or that the appellate court looks at it and says, no, we think this case really is worth $5 million. Now, your attorney has an obligation. Knowing that the defense is not going to give him what he asked for, now he's going to increase that demand. So he may turn around and say, listen, this case is worth $10 million. If you want to settle this, I will accept $10 million now. Now, that's a good starting point. Why? Because from there, now the defense hopefully will come back with a significant offer, hopefully in the seven-figure range, meaning above a million dollars. And now they can begin talking. And your attorney's goal is to get them as close as possible from that $10 million to his target number. The defense's goal is just the opposite, to try and minimize the amount that they actually have to pay. And they will slowly, maybe slowly, make their way up to that target number that the attorney is thinking about. But that may require some finesse. It may require getting a judge involved to try and help the negotiation process. It may also require you to go through the mediation process, which is really a settlement negotiation that's held outside of court. So that's a possibility as well. So the mere fact that you are going forward to trial does not automatically mean that your case is going to settle. The mere fact that your attorney begins negotiating with the other side does not mean that your case is going to settle. There are some instances where the defense turns around and admits liability. Yes, we were wrong. But they will fight you tooth and nail on the amount that they will have to pay. So even though your attorney demands a significant amount of money, it doesn't mean you're going to get it. So let's get back to the question that I raised earlier. Is the attorney's fee ever factored into the negotiations? It shouldn't be. You know why? Because that's got nothing to do with what your true value of your injuries are. Now, it's rare that an attorney turns around to his opponent and says, hey, listen, after this case is over, I'm only going to get one third or I'm going to get 30% or 15 or 20%, depending upon the sliding scale in a malpractice case. Hey, can you go ahead and increase that amount of money? That doesn't happen. If you are considering, if an attorney is considering the effect of his attorney's fee and how much his client is going to walk away with, then yes, that demand should be significantly higher. So instead of getting, let's say, a $5 million demand, now making a $10 million demand and hopefully reaching five, knowing full well that if you achieve a $5 million settlement, you know what your expenses are because the attorney has a list. You know what the attorney's fee will be. And now the client is going to know exactly how much they will walk away with. So now your attorney can factor into his settlement negotiations, okay, how much are the attorney's expenses? How much is the actual fee, assuming you get a certain amount of money? And now you could say, okay, now I know what my demand should be. Now I know where we want to wind up. And now I know how much the client needs in order to go ahead and acknowledge and accept a particular settlement offer. So in that instance where the client is demanding and says, yes, I need to have this amount of money, yes, then it's important for the attorney to recognize, hey, I need to factor in the expenses, I need to factor in the attorney's fee, so that at the end of the day, this is how much my client walks away with. So why do I share this quick information with you? I share it with you just to give you an insight and an understanding into what goes on in these settlements involving accident cases and medical malpractice and even wrongful death matters here in the state of New York. You know, I understand you're watching this video because you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if you have not yet started a lawsuit and are thinking about bringing a case and still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your legal questions. You know, this is something I do every single day and I'd love to talk to you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.